Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to talk about the Nemo Dragonfly Osmo and the Nemo Dragonfly Osmo bike pack. Here we go. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about both the new Nemo Dragonfly Osmo and the new Nemo Dragonfly Osmo bike pack. Now I do have two reviews on the 2021 bike pack that was released that I used on the Colorado Trail. You can find those videos here. For the most part, the two bike packs have stayed the same with a couple of design upgrades as well as the Osmo fabric. So that's why today I'm gonna to talk about the difference between the normal backpack they have listed on their website as well as the bike packing tank. And that's really what people have asked questions around when I had my previous rev reviews, the bike pack or the regular backpack version. So what I have here also is a 2P version and also a 1P version. Usually I will get the 2P because I frequently hike with Remy, but this year I'm actually going to a few national parks where dogs aren't allowed. So I wanna be able to have a smaller size tent and make sure it works for me. Then I will also be able to update you guys on whether or not I think the 1P is big enough for a one person tent. A lot of 1P tents are too small, so people frequently will upgrade to a 2P. And so a little bit of the design differences between the two, as well as space and how it feels to be inside both the tents and whether or not the price and the size or weight upgrade is really worth it. So if I first go through the text and specs, primarily telling you guys the difference between a 1P tent and the 2P version. The regular version versus the bike pack version, there's actually not that much difference in terms of size and weights and pretty much exactly the same between a 2P regular version and a 2P bike pack version. So that will stay consistent between the regular version as well as the bike pack version. Then I'll go through some of the major upgrades, particularly on the regular Nemo backpack, because that is the one that has had the major overhaul since the bike pack was originally released in 2021. It's only been two years since that last release. And then I'll go through what the design differences are really between the regular backpack and the bike pack so you can figure out if the $100 or almost $100 price difference is worth it to you in your backpacking experience. And then I'll go through some of the design opportunities, I like to call them, that Nemo still has within the Dragonfly because I always say I've had multiple versions of the Dragonfly and each time they upgrade a little bit differently in terms of the user friendliness, uh, durability of the zippers, durability of the fabrics. And so there's still opportunities in design as the Dragonfly evolves. All right, here we go. So let's talk first about the dimensions of the tent. So both 1P and 2P versions are 88 inches long, which is super long. When I put my sleeping pad in the tent, I still have about 10 to 12 inches of headroom in the very front if I push my sleeping pad to the foot end of space. That is huge. Now both tents still carry that trapezoidal design, which means that the head end is a little bit wider than the foot end, and that helps save weight as well as space within the tent so you can carry an ultralight tent. The width of the 1P at the head end is 35 inches and at the foot end is 32 inches, which means you can actually fit a long wide sleeping pad in this 1P tent, which is great because most people these days, they don't actually use a mummy sleeping pad. Most people have converted over to the rectangular wide sleeping pads. Now with a 2P on the other hand, if it is truly a 2P, it will not fit two wide sleeping pads. It'll only fit two standard mummy sleeping pads, which are usually 20 inches wide on each side. Because the head space is 50 inches, you could technically get a wide pad in the head, but you'd have overlap on the foot end, since at the foot end, it's only 45 inches. So again, you could fit a mummy, most likely, and a wide, but not both wide sleeping pads if you're truly using this as a 2P. But will be pretty tight in terms of having a true 2P tent. So I always like to call this version a one plus, a one plus large dog like Remy who is 90 pounds, or if you're a one person and love extra space and not a lot of incremental weight from the one P, this is a great option for you. Now weight difference between the normal backpack and the bike pack is that the bike pack with the trail weight, which means the tent, the poles and the rain fly is several ounces heavier, so about three ounces, and I believe that is actually because Nemo measures the landing zone, which does not come with the normal backpack. 
So all in all, the weight is very similar, just a couple of ounces more for the actual bike pack. In terms of the 1P versus the 2P, the 1P actually weighs in at just over two pounds. So two pounds, one ounce, or two pounds, two ounces, depending on your scale. And then the 2P weighs in at two pounds, 10 ounces. And I did do measurements off by an ounce or two, but again, kind of depends on your scale. But that is a trail weight, so I measured the poles, the tent, as well as the rain fly. And you can find each individual components weight that I weighed in in the description box below. Both tents do also have the vent struts on the outside and you can access these from the inside of the tent, which is great. I keep them open all night just to allow for better airflow. The tents also still have that weird design on the head end that people complain about all the time that doesn't go all the way to the ground. And this actually allows per Nemo more ventilation within the head area. And in that head area, I have experienced condensation on the inside of the tent. So airflow in that area is definitely what you need to have. However, people are still worried that because the tent doesn't extend all the way down, rain's gonna get in, especially if it's windy. I have not experienced that issue. The bathtub floor does extend very high at the head end, which is also why you get condensation in that area. You shouldn't have an issue if it rains and rain gets on that part of the tent. Now, both versions carry some of Nemo's most recent upgrades, the biggest being the Osmo fabric. And if you actually watch my Dagger Osmo first look from last year, you can get a little bit more description and view a little bit more about what this fabric looks like in this video posted here. But the Osmo fabric is great and one of the newest fabrics out there that actually increases water repellency and reduces stretch. So what Nemo claims is that it has four times, four times, four times its water repellency of the previous nylon version and three times less stretch than the previous version. So that means you're not getting up in the middle of night trying to adjust your tent because it's raining, as well as it doesn't feel as heavy in the morning or carry actually as much water because nylon has absorption properties as the previous version. And so this is a great technology. It's actually a ripstop, so that means it's woven in together, as you can see here, and made without the PFC and the PFAS that had been in their previous tents as well as part of their sustainability program. Both tents will have the gatekeeper clips, which I love because you can clip the rain fly back or the door back one-handed and with gloves, which is great for a winter setup. Also, Nemo added more storage. So the overhead storage bin still there, which I really love. But in this version, they also added more storage on the foot end, which from a practicality standpoint with my dog, I tend not to use that one because Remy brushes up against the end and hair gets all in there and knocks out things. But for people who aren't backpacking with a dog, this is also another great storage option for inside your tent. And the final biggest upgrade that this tent got was that they added an integrated Jake's foot pull clip. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is the integrated Jake's foot clip. And what that means is that the webbing for the tent is actually integrated or loops in to the Jake's foot clip. And previously, Nemo had an actual grommet style pole clip, which the poles can come out and then when you actually stacked the, the rain fly with the footprint, you weren't able to get everything in there so it wasn't as integrated. This allows for a nice, fast, easy setup because the poles can just insert into the hole and clip right in there. You can also have, we're not gonna call it a fast fly setup because you can't actually just set up the fly individually, but you can call it a fast pitch setup. So if you leave the fly clipped in to the tent when you pack it, and if it is rainy, you can spread out the tent with the rain fly out top and shimmy the poles underneath so your tent doesn't get wet and pitch it from the inside. So that's the goal of the Jake's foot attachments as well as making it easy, especially if you're setting it up as a single operator. The tent poles will stay clipped in here without them flying everywhere and you having to really run around in circles to be able to get the poles in there. And what I also mean by integrated with the webbing is that in a typical Jake's foot or previous is that it would become separated. So you could leave this clipped into the footprint, you could leave it clipped into the tent or the rain fly. So if this was truly a fast fly setup, you clipped in the footprint and then you can put the poles up and put the rain fly over and then set up the tent. So that's one of the major differences between this integrated Jake's foot clip as well as its standard Jake's foot clip. Now, I don't really know how much I like this because I would love to have the fast fly option. So I'm not sure why Nemo decided to make it integrated into the actual clip versus a standard Jake's foot clip. 
All right, so now I'm gonna talk about some of the differences between the 2021 bike pack and the 2023 bike pack outside of the Osmo fabric updates, but a couple of the design differences that Nemo did, which I thought were great as an upgrade to the two different designs. So I'm gonna call these a bit of enhancements to the previous one. As mentioned, they included extra storage in the foot end of the tent, which is great. Everyone always needs extra storage that is off the ground. They also increased the size of the daisy chains that come with the bike pack. So in the first one, you had the daisy chains that are still on the inside of the rain flyer on the tent on the interior. So your clothes can actually not get wet or hang on the outside of your tent. Though I have heard comments that there is condensation on the inside of the rain fly, which happens. So can also prevent your clothes from drying out fully in the middle of the night. But they increase the size of those daisy chains. The other thing that they increase is the slides slightly for that nightlight overhead pocket that's overhead, which actually makes your headlamp fit in a little bit better. I had made a comment earlier in my 2021 review that it was just not big enough to actually put in a bigger headlamp in there. So they increase that size, which allows for a standard headlamp to fit into that nightlight pocket. The other thing that they did is actually extend out the zipper on the door to make it easier to pull one-handed. I still had to wiggle it a little bit or pull that bottom taut just to make sure that the zipper gets there. But they also, but they did increase that design of the door to make it easier as a continuous zipper and be able to get that door open one-handed. The detriment to that is that it decreased the amount of space from the edge of the door to the side of the tent, which that, if you remember from my previous review, I loved where that side pocket was. There's a ton of space in that side pocket that was off of the ground. And now the side pocket is very, very small and only fits a cell phone. So you could put your cell phone or glasses. I actually used to love putting my glasses, my cell phone, as well as my water bottle up there and off the floor to make sure that water wasn't spilling everywhere or I'd have something that was within easy reach. Only because I am shorter, so it's harder for me to get easily into that top storage bin without having to sit up at the way. So this was a good way previously for me to be able to reach up and get my glasses or get my water bottle or get anything I wanted off the floor that I had inside the tent. So again, I don't know if I like the smaller pocket, but it was also the way that they could actually enhance how they could enhance the design of the door to be easily opened. Nemo also added at the top some gear loops. And so this is a great addition as well as where you could hang a headlamp if you wanted to, or hang a tent lamp. So another thing to hang inside and have extra gear that you can hang without adding extra weight. So this was a great addition is to be able to have that interior hanging gear loop. And one of the last design enhancement that I love from the 21 version to the 23 version is that in the 21 version on the foot end of the rain fly, the webbing that clipped the rain fly into the tent was not adjustable. So if I wanted to get my tent nice and tight, if it was raining, I had to make adjustments so the rain would still continue to shed and you didn't see any sinking. I wasn't able to adjust that head end of the tent, which was, which was a huge issue for me. So here's what I mean. Okay, so as you can see from the 21 version, you've just got the grommet, no adjustment point. And then from the 23 version, you've got the clip for the rain fly and a nice adjustment point. All right, so now just going through some of the differences between the regular backpacking tent and then the bike pack version, which I do love the bike pack version more, but it is about $100 more, so you guys can determine for yourselves whether or not that difference in price is really worth it. So the biggest difference I believe between the two tents is gonna be the size of the poles. So the size of the poles for the normal backpack are gonna be a standard tent height, and the size of the poles for our bike pack are gonna be significantly shorter, just under 12 inches, which makes it able to fit either horizontally or really conveniently in the side of your pack. So if you're thinking about your pack here, again, either in where I usually carry it is in the side pocket, or if I have room in my pack, I'm able to put it horizontally within my pack as well, or down in the side without it getting in the way. As you can see here, very, very long, will not be able to fit horizontally. So it's a little bit more cumbersome in terms of the volume and the size of the regular backpacking poles. The pole bag, actually, I was quite surprised that this only came in the Osmo pole bag. The dagger, as well as the previous bike pack come in their reprieve bag, which is made from recycled plastic bottles. But all in all, 
a very lightweight stuff sack and I usually just bring this on trail with me so my poles can stay dry and out of the rain and not just get a normal wear and tear. Both set of poles are the hub model. So there is a single hub that again is really easy and color coded for both sides. I don't poke someone's eye out with them. So the color end actually being the foot end for both and the gray end because they are pre-bent being the taller end. So on top to actually bring and lift up the tent itself, this sits on top and there are two clips on the tent in which you would attach it. So some people don't like the fact that it doesn't come with another attachment. I haven't found it to be an issue. I only find it to be an issue because I tend to lose things or forget things on trail. And this is a little bit of a smaller pole, so it can easily be lost. So just make sure you don't forget it on trail, but it is in this case, bright green for you to be able to remember it on trail. So now I'm looking at the bike pack version. Again, one big hub with the pre-bent poles and your smaller attachment that spreads out the tent and lifts it up so you get more volume on the inside. The bike pack poles are slightly smaller in diameter, 8.7 for the regular versus 8.5 millimeters for the bike pack. But talking to Nemo, the durability and the strength should be the same between the two different versions. There is more pole, I guess what you would call it, pole component, pole parts, pole spaces to pick it together for the bike pack because they are smaller. So if you're a person who gets easily annoyed, at putting together different pieces like that. It may be a decision point for you, but I definitely do love the smaller pole set. The one weird thing is that Nemo did color code this pole set as well, but the actual colors on here are not gray and green, like the bright green that match the actual backpacking version. It's orange, so orange represents the, let me see. I can even remember. So orange on the bike pack version represents the green end, so the color end of the pole set, so not a one for one. And the dark green matches the gray end and not the green end. So just a little bit confusing. They did color code it, but not actually match the same colors for the bike packs. So either an error on Nemo's part or thinking it was intuitive that the dark green matches the dark side, but not the green side. And then the bright orange matches the bright green. The only way I could explain it. Another big difference between the normal regular backpacking version and the bike packing version is also going to be the exterior daisy chains, which you can use to hang dry your clothes, which I really loved when I was on the Colorado Trail, just to be able to hang my stinky wet socks or my stinky tank top on at night and be able to have it dry or pseudo dry or at least not crumpled up in a ball in my backpack or in my tent. So it got things off the floor and out of the way as well. The bike pack also includes Nemo's new landing zone, which actually for this version, I forgot to mention, includes an upgrade where you actually get it to clip in instead of just loop in to the tent. Now, it was a little bit cumbersome because the clips are so small, so I don't know if I like that upgrade yet, but just a big difference between the two landing zones is that if you do have an older landing zone or try to find one off of eBay that someone is selling, it won't integrate with the new tent. The regular backpack version does not come in with the landing zone, which was again interesting for me because they included the landing zone with the dagger Osmo, but not with the dragonfly. So another big difference in the landing zone is just a waterproof piece of fabric that clips in the tent. And I do love this, especially if you live in a wet climate or you go backpacking in the rain a lot because it keeps things dry and off the muddy ground. So great to throw things in there, especially again, if you have the one P version and you don't have a lot of room in your tent, great to put stuff outside your tent and keep it dry. And another obvious difference between the tents is gonna be the color. Now the new dragonfly comes in their birch bud for the fly and their goodnight gray for the interior of the tent. And the bike pack version actually has not been updated on Nemo's website with the name of the color, but it's more of this lighter green color as well as orange accents and more of a gray, grayish green base. It looks like it's the same, but that's a big difference between the previous one, which was in this navy boreal color, as well as a dark base. 
Another big difference between the two tents is that the guy lines and the guy out points in the bike pack version do not have reflective threads in the webbing, which if you're one who trips on poles a lot or you wanna see where you're walking could be an issue. Uh, it wasn't an issue for me, though I do like reflective webbing and I like reflective guidelines, but you'll see that that's the difference in the guy out points as well as the guidelines for the regular backpack. And one of the final biggest differences we have between the normal backpacking version of the tent as well as the bike pack version is gonna be on the stuff sack. So Nemo has this Divi Cube, which is a rectangular shape stuff sack, which you can also split with a partner. So if you're getting this as a two-piece tent, it's able to roll down all the way. And then the bike pack version obviously has something meant to attach to a bike or a moving object. So very robust and thicker than near in terms of the outside of the case. It has a grab handle that's adjustable with Velcro. It also has adjustment compression straps on the side that go into your bike, or I actually stick sometimes when I store this, the poles on the outside instead of the inside of the tent, but they just unclip and clip back together and adjust. It also has a roll down top. Now, the, the difference between the weight of the two is about an ounce and a half, so it is quite heavier for a stuff sack. And what I normally do just to save size and weight as well, since one of these simple stuff sacks is about half of an ounce, is that the 2P Dragonfly will fit into a five liter stuff sack, and then the 1P Dragonfly will fit into a four liter stuff sack, which again, you save about an ounce, an ounce or two ounces. So again, you save about two ounces from the bike pack stuff sack to a normal cheapo stuff sack that you can get at REI or Sea to Summit. All right, that's it. If you enjoyed the content of this video or just found it a little bit helpful, please give this a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you have any questions about the differences between the tent, the upgrades from the previous version to this one, put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. Other than that, I'm Details and this is Girl Puts Dog Adventures where I talk all about hiking, camping, and your outdoor life adventures with you and your dog. Thanks for watching.